Metro Bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. One of the most daunting and also exciting parts about moving to a new area is figuring out all the new places to fish. Today we are on the banks of the St. Mary's River in a little spot called King's Ferry thanks to a comment on a recent video from a bass and bud. I've been looking for some fresh water to dump the old retro wagon in and um, let's just say where I am in Amelia Island is a little bit more salty than perhaps the old bass tracker is ready for. So we are about an hour outside of Fernandina Beach and where the St. Mary's River turns mostly fresh water. Last night I did a quick Google Earth search and definitely found some fishy looking little creeks and cuts on this river and also was scoping out the Fish Brain app which is pretty sparse to be honest with you as far as the kind of fish in here. I know there's definitely catfish. I've seen some catches of bowfin and according to our bass and bud in the comment section, there are largemouth as well. So I've got a number of rods rigged up, mostly some lures that came from our little trip from Texas to Florida. Uh, we've got some baits from Jensen Fishing Tackle. We've got a few gifts from Dee's Tackle Box, and you better believe I've got some Bacon's inspired baits as well. So stick around, we're gonna get the old retro wagon dumped in St. Mary's River. See you soon. Well, if I was unsure whether or not this was a tidal river, check it out. That water is ripping on down river. Man, I kind of feel like home. Tide is ripping this morning. This is cool. Woo. Talk about exploring a spooky swamp today. Man. I actually did have the crew out here on the river briefly this weekend to do a little recon. Didn't really do any fishing, but I kind of wanted to at least get here once, launch, and look around. Again, I don't know if there are bass in here, but Man, there ought to be bass in here. This is a very fishy looking little river. There's other parts of other rivers in Florida that are almost too daunting for me. Took a drive over a big part of the St. John's and that thing almost looks like the Chesapeake Bay. It's a, it's a monster. But this, I feel like I can manage. I did some Google Earth searching and there are a ton of different little creeks that feed into this river. And I've marked a few of those, and I've got a few of those to try. But first, there's a nice little spot of some lily pads just up ahead. And uh, I've got a good old Doug Hannon frog tied on. Ooh. That'd be kind of cool if the uh, first Florida fish you get is on a uh, Doug Hannon bait. That would be uh, quite apropos. I feel like it's only appropriate whether or not I catch my first fish in Florida on a Doug Hannon lure it should definitely be the first one I throw. This is a nice old school Doug Hannon frog bait. Came new out of the package and whew, look at this thing. I've got it tied onto some braid because I only have one of these. I don't want to lose it today. And I've got my old Corrado green reel, the old E7 paired up with a, an old school, I guess old school at this point, Bass Pro Shops Nitro big old rod. Never fish a 7-8 rod sitting down. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> Just have to set up. Set up, otherwise I'll be taking you guys out.
What's so cool about this river is that is Florida and that's Georgia. <laughs> and the river kind of bends and weaves so it's actually quite easy to lose orientation of which state is which. By the way, check out the prop wash. It's like iced coffee back there, doesn't it? <laughs> Speaking of which, how did I forget the one lure I really should have brought and that is my newly acquired black silver minnows. I spent a couple hours getting the gear on the boat ready yesterday and I forgot the minnows. Of course. If I recall from my uh, days fishing the tidal Potomac River, a lot of times the bass will stage up on the mouth of these creeks and wait for that water and bait fish to be flushed on out of there. So I'm going to do the same and uh, hopefully trick a bass into biting. Ah, we'll see. Maybe I'll throw the spinnerbait next. Man, that tide is definitely ripping and we are going to start chunking and winding this dude. So start to finish, I think this is a Bacon's original spinnerbait. Of course, I picked up a bunch of the Bacon latex tube skirts on my last visit to Shreveport, Louisiana. And I also had grabbed some of these a trip ago. And these are some spinnerbaits that uh, Michael Bacon had lying around with no skirts on them. So in the off season when I get back to Florida, I rigged this thing up and look at this little dirty water spinnerbait. Oh, this thing might work. Woo! Oh! Oh my gosh. Oh, I got something. What is that? Oh, baby bowfin. Oh, I had a suspicion my first solo Florida fish was gonna be a bowfin. I'm actually really glad it was. What a cool, cool fish. I know it's probably thought of as a bit of a trash fish down here, but I am a trash fisherman at heart. Back up in Maryland on the tidal Potomac and Magathy, I pretty much targeted trash fish, and that is the chain pickerel. One of my favorite fish to catch. This bowfin might be my new favorite. Oh man, strong little guy. So my spinnerbait has definitely seen better days, but there is our first Florida fish. Freshwater, solo fishing, a nice bowfin. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Let's let him go. Oh my goodness. Ooh, man, that thing hit like a ton of bricks. I am kind of scared to see what kind of shape my bacon spinnerbait is in. I feel like that was my fifth or sixth cast with that spinnerbait. And man, the way that thing hit, I thought I had a five pound largemouth. Oh my God, my spinnerbait is an absolute wreck. Oh man. <laughs> I just got my spinnerbait out of the net and look at this thing. Oh my goodness, that skirt is so jacked up. It looks like it just got done with happy hour at the floor of Bama. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm gonna try to bend this back into shape if I can. <laughs> oh man. All right, here we go. Back in business. All right, so we are just up river from the boat ramp, fishing some of these other sort of little cuts that are coming out into the main river. Man, tide is ripping here. I'm having a hard time even keeping the boat positioned. Boy, this is uh just like old times. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm just, I've whiffed on three fish in a row. Oh, he smokes. <laughs> Must be a hundred of them stacked up in here. Oh my gosh. There's one. I think I got a hook in this one. Woo! Uh, 
Yes, sir, I did. <laughs> I just don't think I was setting the hook on these guys nearly enough. These guys have pretty big bony mouths after all they are sort of living dinosaurs. Oh man, let's get this guy out of here and take a look at him. <laughs> well, there is my second bowfin of the day. Uh, an absolute monster of a bowfin. That was really cool. That guy hit so, so hard. I didn't even want to look at my spinnerbait. <laughs> oh, let's let him go. Look at that dude. Oh my goodness. Look <laughs> at that thing. <laughs> oh man. Whew. <laughs> that skirt's been, uh, I got skirt missed happy hour. I went to closing time. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Man, the line broke just as he got into the net, and that makes sense. I did upgrade this reel. I normally have, I think, like 15 pound test on it. I ended up putting 17 pound on last night in preparation for these bigger fish, and I'm glad I did because that line still broke. So there we go. Got our uh, spinnerbait back in action. <laughs> I don't think this thing would last all day, though. I'll tell you that. I'm trying to decide if the net is more trouble than it's worth with these fish. That bowfin gets in the net and then immediately gator rolls my hook right into the net. So uh, if I want to speed up and not miss this outgoing tide, I don't know, I might just be boat swinging these bad boys. <laughs> Probably shouldn't do that though. No. Still not a largemouth by the way. I mean, I wonder if there are largemouth in here. Boy, there's no idea. You'd think there would be. I mean, I can't imagine there's not a single Florida strain largemouth in here, nothing but bowfin, but who knows? The holy direction for the channel. <laughs> Carl's gonna be so mad. Oh, there's one. <laughs> yeah, buddy, another bowfin. <laughs> I'm gonna let him calm down for a second. Come on, buddy. <laughs> so there we go, third bowfin of the day. I've never seen such a place, nothing but bowfin. Crazy. Gone. <laughs> Three bowfin in. Man, I don't know how many more bowfin this uh, spinnerbait's got left in him. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, jeez. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Forget the line breaking. I think the wire's about to break. Man, let's retie. Oh, let's see if we can get this guy out of the water without hooking myself. Oh, man. Come on, buddy. <laughs> Check it out. Bowfin number four. I mentioned my favorite trash fish, the chain pickerel. I don't know why, but I've got a hunch these bowfin behave pretty similar. It seems sort of like long, lazy fish that just want to sit up shallow and wait for something to come on by. So I've got a couple of good little areas here. We're going to scoot on down it, ride the tide, and hopefully get another bowfin or two. I think we're up to four. That's a big one. Oh, that's a giant. Oh. I just love, love, love the way these guys hit. That is bowfin number five. Let's get him unhooked and I will give you all a look. Woo. Wow, I finally got that fish uh, unhooked. Let's grab him if I can hold him, we'll see. Ah. 
<laughs> See if we can grab him. Ah! <laughs> I was talking to Michael Bacon about some of his favorite old school colors of spinnerbaits. And one of the classics he mentioned was a blue skirt with a red head. So it was a really good sort of uh, stained water spinnerbait. Well, I didn't have any redheads, but I had this orange, sort of a flow orange. So I figured that was the next closest thing. <laughs> there ain't much skirt left on this hula girl, huh? Man. There's something. What is that? <laughs> Ooh. Well, that ain't no mudfish. Would you look at that beautiful warmouth? Oh man, what an awesome fish. I'm pretty sure that's a warmouth. Yeah, I think that is. That's a really, really cool looking fish. Check him out on the old bacon spinnerbait. Man! Well, check out that gorgeous little fish. I do believe that is a warm mouth, and if it is, that's the first warm mouth I've ever caught. Gorgeous, gorgeous little fish, and what a cool welcome to the Sunshine State. <sighs> He must have been hungry. <laughs> oh, let's let him go. Well, recently when I saw my buddy Ted Lincoln over in Gainesville, he showed me his stump of fame, which is basically a place where he puts every lure that has caught him a fish of eight pounds or larger, as well as some sentimental catches. Well, I don't know uh, what the next 100 yards or so holds for me with this bait, but this one uh, is definitely going to go on the old retro stump of fame. First full freshwater fishing day here in the state of Florida. Did not necessarily catch the largemouth we were after, but got five bowfin or mudfish and one first ever warm mouth for me. So awesome day on this river. <laughs> and that one is going to the stump. By the way, if you guys are looking for some more old school content, click right here. Otherwise, I'll see you right back here, same time, same place. And as always, until then, keep that carpet side up and not too slimy from the uh, slime of bowfin. And definitely, fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassoon.